Hi, my name is Susanna Whitney, and I play principal bassoon in the Memphis Symphony Orchestra, and I wanted to give you a couple of tips for playing your excerpts for the Memphis Youth Symphony Audition. The Tchaikovsky Fourth Symphony, Slow Movement, and um, The Marriage of Figaro. For Tchaikovsky Four, the thing that I find my students have the most difficulty with is the tenor clef. So before you even pick up your bassoon, pick up your music and just say the names of the notes instead of writing them in the way that a lot of us would like to do i would suggest actually learning it because once you make it into the orchestra you'll be seeing a lot of tenor clef and you don't want to have to write it in every time you see it it's a lot easier just to learn it so the line that the clef is holding is middle c that C. So starting we have D flat, C, B flat, A. And you're going to just keep saying the names of the notes. B flat, F, F, C, until you can say the entire excerpt several times over without really stopping because that's that's the hardest part about this excerpt. The next hardest is being able to play the whole phrase with as few breaths as possible. You really want to just take one breath after the A in bar 282 and that's it. Obviously it's okay if you have to breathe a couple more times. Choose them, um, choose your breaths to be a little less noticeable. Um, find the phrases when they when the phrase ends, when it's a nice place to breathe and really try and make it a habit so that you know where you're breathing in the audition room. The other thing I want to mention is the staccatos at the end of the excerpt. You don't want to make them too short. I know we all want to play our staccato short, but for some reason, I think he wrote staccatos because he wants us to separate them, but he doesn't want them to be short notes. A lot of times you'll listen to recordings of bassoon players playing this, and it doesn't even sound like it's short at all. They sound very legato, and I think that's okay to play it that way. Another thing I want to mention is there's a nine bar um, a nine bar rest at the very end. Just count one bar. Don't get it, when we count too many bars, sometimes we get lost and the person who's listening to our dish audition gets a little bored. So just play one bar of rest. When I play this, when I practice this, I practice it through with a metronome several times and with a tuner. It hits a lot of the really bad notes on the bassoon, especially starting on a D flat is not very fun. And we always slow down. Everybody who plays this always slows down. So you wanna play it with a metronome a couple of times, not every time you practice it, just to kind of get a feeling for moving forward because you are gonna to wanna to stretch the tempo back and forth when you play it. And lastly, it says pianissimo, don't play it too quietly. You're playing a solo and everybody else is quiet, so you can you don't have to play it loud, but um, don't worry about playing it too soft. So that's check four. Marriage of Figaro is a very, very difficult excerpt song. Oof. Um, so, so practice it slowly. 
When I started playing this, I started at about 80 beats per minute. And don't go any faster than that until you can play the whole excerpt. It's really hard at the very end. That to me is always very, very difficult. If I were listening as a judge, I would rather hear someone come in and play it slowly and correctly. Then quickly and incorrectly. As you play this more and more, the speed will come. It's a very fun um, overture and it's it's, I think it's easy on the cellos. I don't for the cellist to play it. So it's it, I think we get a complex. We think it's such a hard piece, um, but it really isn't. It's just about solving the problems. One of the ways you want to um, deal with these hard fingerings, the D to C sharp, is put down your whisper key lock or fold up a paper so that it um, you can rest it in there. Um, so that your whisper lock is closed. That way, instead of going D, C sharp, D, C sharp, D, you're simply going D, C sharp, D, C sharp, D, and it's an easier fingering. Because you're moving up the bassoon, you shouldn't crack on the A and the B and the um, C or C sharps, or G or G sharps when you're playing. If you do, you can flick this key, the third from the bottom, this one. Um, the fast notes, as you're practicing it, um, depending on how fast you end up playing it, you can choose either to double tongue or single tongue. I would suggest for my, most high schoolers, don't play this much faster than, I don't know, 110. 120 is, I would think, would be plenty. If you can single tongue that fast, ta -ta 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 -ta, I can't. <laughs> um, good for you. I have a very slow tongue. So I actually learned how to double tongue as I was playing this as well. So when I played the six, the slowly at the 80 beats per minute. Two, three, four. Two, three. Like that, um, I actually learned how to double tongue there. So instead of going ta 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 ta, you're gonna go ta ka ta ka, which maybe doesn't sound very great at that slow tempo, but the faster you get, the better it'll sound. So even at 120, that to me, for me, is better than going because I can't tongue that fast. Um, so I'm going to play this excerpt for you. I'm not going to play it very fast because I don't think you have to play it very fast. Just play it correctly. That's what's most important. And work on playing it as soft as you can. Don't kill yourself, though. If, it, if it's a choice between the note coming out and um, being a little bit louder, Choose a tiny bit louder so that the note comes out, so that the person listening to you knows when you're starting. one, the D's, I um, single tongued, and the C, the A's, I double tongued. And so for me, the double tonguing sounds a lot better than the single tonguing, but for you, it might be the opposite. So really just practice it. The double tonguing and the single tonguing are good, um, good tricks to have in your bag. So practice them both and 
practice your scales, practice your long tones, practice your solo piece, and good luck. I think you'll do great.